Good morning, dear friends of uh, the Sword Ministries. Thank you for uh, watching us online through the uh, video channel and so on. My name is Francois Blouin, director of uh, the Sword Ministry Society based in British Columbia. And this morning, dear beloved, I would like to invite you to session. I'm going to call them session from now on. Session um, six, basically, on theology proper, which is the doctrine of God. Before I start with a word of prayer, I want to thank you, first of all, for your persistence, even in the tedious studies, like the last few sessions are difficult to explain. And this morning, there is a lot of a theism, ism, ism, and ism. And once again, we will explain them by one. Just let me briefly um, put you in the context of what we still do. We are under theism, the first division of theology proper. It's going to get exciting as we get into the personality and the attributes of God and so forth, and even the Trinity in a few weeks down the road, 10, 15 weeks maybe. Uh, quite exciting stuff. Capital A, the naturalistic argument. We have seen quite a few things. No need to repeat, basically, because they are on the previous uh, sessions that we have done. So you can tick mark naturalistic arguments. We have seen them all, explain them briefly. There is much more to say, but I wanted to be brief. And then last week I explained the biblical argument. It was very easy that the Bible assumes the existence of God. The Bible does assume the existence of God and the Bible teaches the existence of God. Today, after the prayer, we get into the opposing views opposing views, capital C here, and then there will be a little bit more, but now we get into the opposing views, including all this. So just have a peek at this. I would like you to note them. I hope that online they will be easily seen. I believe they are, since all the videos are tested before being um, uploaded and also posted. So we'll take a few today. We'll see how it goes. And uh, may God bless you in your studies. Why don't we take a brief silent time and, uh, and then embark into capital C, the opposing views together. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are glad to be able to do these things in such a way in our country and also in neighboring countries as well. I am asking you, Father, to prosper, to prosper those who are watching these videos, to prosper them in every way, primarily spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially, Father. Lord, we cannot comprehend these things unless we come to these things, to the Word and to the teaching of the Bible and so on and different segments of it, without an entire submissiveness to the Holy Spirit. He is our teacher. Not necessarily me, but the Holy Spirit is the primary teacher, which enables us to comprehend the deep things of the, of the faith and of the Bible. For that reason, we give you thanks, Lord, for everything that we do together. Please protect the beloved. Please protect me also. And give us a good session together. And help us out, Father, to apply what we need to apply and to take seriously with great trembling, positive trembling, as we continue to study these things. Give you thanks, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, repeatedly, we carry on with capital C, the opposing views, and the opposing views here are basically against the existence of God. They have a problems. Basically, the problem, the major problem of those who oppose the teaching of the existence of God is basically the existence of the visible universe. Universe. The atheists, they explain it with some form of theism. The, 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 the atheists, they basically explain the existence of God and this is the existence of the visible universe by some form of theism or to some extent or form of atheism. They don't have the choice. They are tossed back and forth between theism and atheism, so they adopt some form of it and so on. 
The reason is, would be basically based on the epistle of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The reason why they explain this, it's basically laid out in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, where it says, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, because they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually judged or appraised. So that's why the constant struggle between theism, some form of it, and the form of atheism. So basically, we come to the opposing views right now, and within the opposing views, there are two categories of them. You have the first category on the board right here, which is theistic views. And needless to tell you that number two next week or in a few weeks will be atheistic views. So the first one to take, uh, based upon the opposing views, there is two uh, categories of them, is theistic views. And we have ten, 10 of them. Let me name them, just to make sure that we have them right. I sure hope that I wrote them right. There are 10 of them. 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, rather. So we have uh, 10 uh, theistic views. We have what we call polytheism. We'll look at that today. Henotheism, pantheism, deism, monism, dualism, pluralism, dynamism, fetishism, and animism. So these are the 10 views. We're going to take probably only three today to keep the session so shorter. I will not erase that until we are completely done with this. So let's take number one. That's what we deal with right now, dear friends. Polytheism. What is polytheism? The word poly means many. They believe in more than one God. They believe in more than one God. For them, there are Many limited gods, small g, of course. In pagans worshipping a plurality of God in scriptures, we can see the cause of it. Basically, in the Bible, we have the cause as to why mankind in uh, atheism and so on, um, they worship a plurality of God. For that reason, I would like to ask you to come with me in the book of Romans chapter 1. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 21 to 23, basically will explain to us within a term as to why we have polytheism. Please come with me in Romans, chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks, but they, beca they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible men and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures here. That was 21 to 23. And the cause of it basically is what we call human um, human depravity. Human depravity is basically what brought the issue of polytheism. Human depravity originates the doctrine of polytheism, if you want to put this in your note. Let me give you four more scriptures of the definition here, three of them of a definition of these many gods or polytheism they are seen in the scriptures as being vanity or nothingness. Vanity or nothingness. That's the view of basically polytheism, but they are viewed in the text of our Bible as being complete vanity and nothingness. A few passages. Psalm, Psalm um, uh, chapter 106, verse 28. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 24 and 29. Isaiah chapter 44, verses 9 to 20, if you want to read that for your own. And Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 26 to 28. Also, Galatians chapter 4, verse 8. They are not real God to begin with. Galatians chapter 4, verse 8, which I would like to take the time to read for you. 
Galatians chapter 4, verse 8. However, at that time, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those which are by nature are no gods, small g. So they are not God to begin with. So this is very serious and this is very important for us to understand this. Would you come back with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 10? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20. 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 says the following, beloved. No, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons. Wow. And not to God. And I do not want you to become sharers in demons here. So, polytheism, the worship of any gods apart from the God of the Bible, Jehovah God, is indeed what we call demonic worship. Because the word in this passage here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, is the word demonia here. So the true object of even worship are not adults, idols per se, but this is indeed what we call demonic worship. And it has to be called by its proper name, and this is demonic worship. So we have one behind our belt. Now, beloved, we take enotheism. Let's take this one together. Enotheism. Enotheism is basically a form of polytheism. It's a form of it. It teaches there is one God for each region, basically. There is one God for each region and every race or nation or, re or region has its own God. And do you know what? It's reflected in the scriptures, not as being the truth here. But they believe basically, as I will see right now, give you the reference, the God of the plain, the God of the ocean, uh, the God of the sun, and the God of the, basically, the mountains. So that's why I'm asking you to jot down a note for scriptural reference. 1 Kings chapter 20, 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 23, it's called the God of the mountains. And enotheism, God for the regions, places, pieces of land, and so forth, is a form of polytheism. You see, this one was shorter, and this is what the only things that I have to say concerning this one. Are you willing to take pantheism with me? This one is slightly longer, and I basically should complete our studies for today. Pantheism, that's the word right here, P-A-N-T-H-E-I-S-M, pantheism here. It means all is God. It's very, I heard about that in the past when you share your faith with people. For them, it means all is God. Let me say a few things. God is everything for them and everything is God. God is universe, is, is in the universe and the universe is God. Everything for them merges into God. God is the totality of all things here. That basically were the means, everything that I just said. A second point that I would like to discuss under pantheism is its theological features. Theological features of pantheism, and here there are several here. Basically, I'm going to enumerate when we have one until basically 12 of them. I'm going to tell them once, and then you can replay the video if I miss something or if you miss something in your notes. What are the theological fe features of pantheism? Number one, God is eminent, but he is not transcendent. God is eminent, but he is not transcendent. Number two, there is a denial of all dualism in the universe. Basically, this is your number two. There is a denial of all that dualism in the universe. Number one, it denies the plurality of mind and matter. Secondly, it denies the duality of soul and body. And thirdly, it denies the duality of God and the world. That was number two. Number three, it does hold to the eternity of matter. That's pantheism. Number four, it believes in only one substance and one being. 
Number five, it denies the personality of God. Number six, it precludes the possibility of sin. It does not believe in sin. Number seven, it holds to the self-deification. Man is really part of God for them. Man is part of God. Number eight, it believes in the deification of both God and evil. Number nine, man is not individual, an individual substance, but he is a moment in the life of God. That doesn't make sense. Number 10, man is only a, a mode of God's existence. Our acts are the acts of God proper for them. Number 11, God is finite. Wow, we will see the complete opposite when we will be doing the attributes of God. And lastly, here, it destroys any basis of true morality. I would like to carry on. We are still under pantheism. Just three more things to note here. We have three different types of pantheism, and I define them for you right now. We have three different types of pantheism here. The first type of, of pantheism is what we call, beloved, materialistic. Materialistic pantheism. It teaches basically that the material universe is God and matter is the eternal cause of all life. That was the first one, materialistic dualism. The second one is naturalistic pantheism. It teaches the ultimate reality is neither mind nor matter. It is neutral stuff such as or like appearances. That was naturalistic pantheism. Lastly, and we finish with this concerning pantheism, idealistic, idealistic pantheism, ideal, idealistic pantheism, it denies the real existence of the material universe. Also, God has, the, God has the sum total of mind and spirit. Ultimately, reality is the nature of the mind, and the world is the product of the mind, either individual mind or the infinite mind. I repeat the last one. The world is the product of the mind, either individual mind or the infinite mind. That's the three basically types of dualism. You can see the style of teaching. Once again, a, mo uh, a word of encouragement to persevere before we get the different section here on the existence and also the attributes and so on and so forth. So we need to go through the tedious for first to lay the foundation and carry on in theolo theology proper. Next week, beloved, deism, money, uh, money, uh, monism, dualism, and so on and so forth. It's a lot of isms, but we'll make it. The time is on our side. God is with us until the taken away of the church, beloved. We are basically on this planet. And please let us in prayer ask God that we may together, beloved. And I take it so seriously, the usage of the, the wise usage of our time. Let me encourage you to carry on and to use your time wisely. Let us pray. Gracious Father, once again, we thank you for what we do together through uh, the uh, technicality that we have and all the evolving of these systems that we have and being capable of uh, technology that we call to do it online. I find it at times difficult. There is no human contact there. However, there is a way to use it wisely. Teach me, Father, to carry on with a wise usage of these things and bless the people that are ministered unto it. We give you thanks. Protect us physically and most importantly, spirituality spiritually we give you thanks in jesus name amen thanks for watching we bid you shalom see you soon for session number seven thank you